Hey there! In this video, we'll talk about the kernel tree, probably one of the most fascinating yet confusing concepts in machine learning and support vector machines. When people first hear about the kernel tree, it seems like a genuine mathematical sorcery, and part of the confusion comes from the word kernel itself. It could refer to a non-parameter way to estimate probability densities in statistics or the null space of a linear transformation in algebra or perhaps the core of an operating system or even something to do with nuts and seeds. But don't worry, by the end of this video, you'll understand what makes the kernel trick so special in machine learning. Let's start with a recap of support vector classification. Imagine we have some data points in a 2D space where we have blue points for class 1 and red points for class 0. In support vector classification, we are trying to find the decision boundary, a line in this case, that separates these two classes. But not just any line, we want the line that creates the maximum margin between the classes. This margin is the distance between the closest points from each class to the decision boundary. In these closest points are called support vectors, and they are the only data points that actually matter for defining our boundary. If we were to move any other point without crossing the margin, our decision boundary wouldn't change at all. Mathematically, our decision boundary is a hyperplane defined by w dot x plus b equals zero, where w is the normal vector to the hyperplane, x is the input vector, and b is the bias term and we classify a new point based on which side of the hyperplane it falls. If w dot x plus b is greater than 0, we predict class 1, and if w dot x plus b is lesser than 0, then we predict class 0. But what happens when our data isn't linearly separable? Let's take a simple example in one dimension. Here we have two points at positions minus 4, minus 2, 2, and 4, and red points at minus 3, minus 1, 1, and 3. And, as you can see, there is no single point that can separate the blue and red classes. And no matter where we put our decision boundary, we'll always misclassify some points. This is where transformations come in. What if instead of looking at just the x position, we transform our data to include x squared as well? Now, our 1D data becomes 2D data. Each data point x becomes x x squared. And look what happens. Our blue points become minus 4, 16, minus 3, 9, 3, 9, and 4, 16. While our red points become minus 2, 4, minus 1, 1, 1, 1, and 2, 4. And, as you can see, now we can draw a horizontal line at y equals 6, for instance that perfectly separates our classes. Let's look at an even more complex example in 2D. Here we have data arranged in concentric circles. The inner circle is one class and the outer ring is another class. There is clearly no straight line that can separate these classes. But if we transform our data by adding a third dimension z, where z equals x squared plus y squared, something magical happens. The outer ring gets lifted higher than the inner circle and now we can separate the classes with a horizontal plane. This is the power of transforming our data to a higher dimension where it becomes linearly separable. But here is where we hit a problem. What if we need many dimensions to make our data linearly separable? For instance, we have data with just two features and we want to use all polynomial terms up to degree 3. We would end up with features like 1, x1, x2, x1 squared, x1 times x2, x2 squared, x1 cubed, x1 squared times x2, x1 times x2 squared, and x2 cubed. That's already 10 dimensions, and it gets exponentially worse as the original dimension or polynomial degree increases. And computing in these high dimensional spaces can be extremely expensive in terms of both time and memory. And basically, this is where the kernel trick comes in to save the day. In short, the key insight is this. When training a support vector machine, we don't actually need the transform data points themselves. 
we only need the dot products between pairs of transformed data points. Basically, this appears in the SVM optimization problem as maximize the sum of alpha i minus one half times the sum of alpha i times alpha j times y i times y j times the third product of phi of x i with phi of x j. Here, alpha are our Lagrange multipliers, y are our class labels, and phi is our transformation function. And if you've got confused by this long equation, don't worry about it. The single term that matters here is the dot product between phi of x i and phi of x j. And now here is the trick. For many useful transformations, we can compute this dot product directly without ever computing the transformation. We define a kernel function k of x and y that equals to the dot product of phi of x with phi of y. Then we can rewrite our optimization problem using this kernel function instead. Let me show you an example with the polynomial kernel of degree 2. If we fully expand our transform feature vector and compute the dot product, we get a big messy expression. But after simplifying, we realize it can be written as simply 1 plus x transpose y squared. This means that instead of transforming our data to six dimensions and then computing the dot products, we can just use our original data and apply this much simple kernel function. Common kernel functions include the linear kernel, which is just x transpose y, the polynomial kernel, x transpose y plus c, raised to the power of d, the radial basis function kernel, which is e to the power of negative gamma, times the square distance between x and y, and the sigmoid kernel, which is the hyperbolic tangent of gamma times x transpose y plus c. In each kernel corresponds to a different implicit feature space. The polynomial kernel maps to all polynomial terms up to degree d, while the RBF kernel maps to an infinite dimensional space. But thanks to the kernel trick, we never need to actually compute in these spaces. Now, let's summarize what we have learned. When data isn't linearly separable, we transform it into a higher dimension where it becomes linearly separable. And this transformation can create extremely high dimensional spaces that would be computationally expensive to work with directly. The kernel trick lets us compute dot products in these high dimensional spaces without ever transforming the data, making support vector machines practical for complex nonlinear classification tasks. And this is why the kernel trick feels like mathematical magic. We are effectively working in a high dimensional space without paying the computational cost. It's a beautiful example of how mathematical insight can lead to a powerful practical algorithm. And that's it for this video. I hope you now understand the kernel trick better, what it is, why it works, and how it makes support vector machines so powerful. Also, I hope that this knowledge will help you not just implement SVMs correctly, but also understand why they work the way they do. Please hit the like button if you found this helpful, share your thoughts in the comments below, and subscribe for more content like this. Also, I would like to give a big thanks to everyone supporting this channel, including my Patreons and YouTube members. Consider joining them if you'd like to help me create more content. Your support makes these videos possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye bye!